top newbie mistakes when getting started in real estate, or really with getting started in any business, I think this kind of goes with. Um, so I think number one is paralysis by analysis, or however you say that, um, where you just keep looking at everything, trying to figure out everything, trying to figure out the perfect plan, trying to figure this out, trying to figure that out, and then like five years go by and you haven't done anything because you're still working on the perfect plan and you're still working on a perfect plan five years later where other people already got started and you're still working on your LLC and on that business card and trying to figure out insurance and trying to build your power team and I don't know, putting together a logo and doing all these things that don't really matter. I mean, they do, but just do a deal, right? If there's in real estate or if it's a product, just do it. And then if it works, then do all the other stuff later, right? Um, so I think that's like number one. And I think number two would be the kind of opposite of not knowing what they're doing, right? So they're almost like too eager to get started. So they do buy a rental, but the numbers don't work on it at all because they don't even really understand how the numbers work. So it kind of seems like it works, but they don't really know if it works or not. And then they get a tenant in there, but they don't really vet the tenant very well. So they might not end up having a very good tenant. Um, so I guess that's like number two is, right? I think the best, thing is to be somewhere in the middle where you kind of know just enough to be dangerous to kind of have an idea of what you're doing but not know everything because there's no way you'll ever know anything right um i think the other very very top mistake is not listening to people's advice mostly when you ask someone for advice and they tell you what to do and this goes obviously for any business but let's just say that you're in real estate and you're, I don't know, in rentals and you ask someone that's got a lot of experience and you got a tenant, you got two tenants and you know which one to pick. And you're like, hey, which one would you pick? And you know, the person with experience says, you should probably go with that guy. In my experience, that guy has been a better option. But for some reason you like the other person, so you pick the other person. <laughs> Right, and that goes with flipping, right? You ask someone what they should do with this flip, they tell you, you do the opposite. So why even ask for people's advice if you're not gonna use it? Mostly people that are experienced. I'm not saying like, go and ask like your mom's aunts, uncles, brother, sister that once had a rental or whatever, um, I have advice on what you're doing <laughs> because maybe they don't have very much good advice to offer, but and maybe they do, I don't know. I'm just saying, if you ask someone that's in the business, that's doing it, that's successful for advice and you don't take it, I mean, that's like, you know, you're like the horse that gets led to water and you don't drink the water because, I don't know why you don't drink the water. You're just not, I don't know. I don't want to call it, I'm not, I, okay, we'll just leave that one there before. Um, and I think the other top mistake would be waiting for the perfect deal, right? The perfect deal is never gonna come. And by the time you think about the perfect deal and try to figure out what the perfect deal would be, someone like me is already, I already bought it and rented it or rehabbed it by the time you even figure it out if it's a perfect deal or not, right? So you gotta be quick, you gotta be able to move, you gotta be able to figure out if something's good or not quickly, you gotta, be very decisive, mostly in like how crazy the market is. And I think it's always gonna be like this, no matter what the, you know, overall market environment is. And kind of to go along with that is like, a lot of people are always working for the, looking for the perfect market condition, right? So they're waiting for, they're waiting for like 09 to 010 and it might come it might not right but i think real estate's like planting a tree you know um no matter what 
when you look back, let's just say like a drastic example, if you bought these 10 houses in a good area that you thought was good, 10, 20 years from now, those houses are probably gonna be worth a lot more money, right? So that's kind of how I look at real estate is, when's the best time to plant a tree, right? And that's today, because 10 years from now, that tree's gonna be bigger, <laughs> right? So that, that's how I look at it. There's no way anyone will ever time the market perfectly. They might act like they will, but no one will ever, 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 no matter how good you think they are or how good they think they are, um, that is just impossible to do, right? No one's got a crystal ball. No one knows the future. And yeah, you can look at past trends, but we all know that you could have looked at past trends all you wanted and you could have never saw their Rona coming. So, I mean, that's that, right? <laughs> so just buy stuff that makes sense, that cash flows and that's good, right? That that's That works off of the basic principles of investing. So those are pretty much my top things that I see uh, newbies kind of doing. So analysis by paralysis, literally having no idea what they're doing, not listening to people, waiting for the perfect deal and waiting to perfectly time the market. So hope this video helped and don't make those mistakes. Or if you are, try to not do them in the future and hope you have a great day.